welcome to my presentation this morning. My name is Sophia Rowe, and for the past 10 months, I've been fortunate to work at the Sarah Center, a program of St. Francis Sarah Ministries and a part of the Holy Line. Um, the title of my presentation is significant to me. It reflects what I've learned this past year in my leadership journey, and that is that effective leadership takes place through effective storytelling. Um, so I want to talk today about how my journey has been around three different aspects of storytelling. One, the importance of offering an authentic story, the importance of co-authoring with others, and the importance of telling stories about impact. Um, the amazing thing about storytelling is that it's a catalyst for change. Um, storytelling has the ability to both influence the person telling the story and the person receiving that story. Um, it allows people to connect in a space that they might not have otherwise. Um, it's a tool of influence and also a catalyst for learning. When I was younger, um, I used to go to sleep after listening to bedtime stories with my mother, and I very soon became a very avid um, reader, and so much so that in college I majored in English and focused on creative writing. But I didn't know that storytelling would become central to my life as a leader later on as I began to work in the nonprofit world. Um, so, the, important, the first part of um, authentic storytelling is to author a, an authentic story yourself. So when I came to Public Allies 10 months ago, um, I arrived with several years of experience in nonprofit work. Um, I felt very confident in my ability to complete projects, to manage multiple tasks, um, to do things according to a deadline. Um, however, I reached kind of a crisis point a few months before Public Allies, and I knew that I wasn't growing as much as I could. I knew that I needed to push myself a little bit harder and I knew that I needed some mentorship, um, some more connections in the community to be as successful and truly as influential as I wanted to be. Um, so I decided to stop trying to change the world <laughs> and instead just try to work on changing myself a little bit. Um, and I believe that Public Allies is going to work, work on that. They should be. <coughs> I do have a word. I do have something to say. And you don't necessarily always have to be in my heart. But that's how I, I communicate is through, through my heart. But now I'm stepping further out because it don't necessarily have to be through the arts. I can talk directly to people. So the second aspect of authentic storytelling um, is to be able to give platform to other people's stories, um, in particular people who don't often have their stories told in the public space. Um, the voice that you just heard was the voice of Teresa. Um, and also the, the Nigerian author Chimamanda Ngozi says that how stories are told, who tells them, and when they're told is really dependent on power. And she also says that the problem with stereotypes is not that they're incorrect, but they're incomplete. And the problem with a single story is that it often becomes the only story. Um, so what I've learned this past year is to be able to provide different avenues for people's voices to be heard, and for them to tell their own story, um, and not to tell it for them. So I'm sharing Teresa's voice that you just heard. She's um, just one of the participants I've had the blessing of working with at Sarah Center this past year. And early on in my service year, I noticed that she was often arriving early and often staying late um, in the day and being the last one to leave. And during one of those days, we were both there cleaning up. She started opening up and sharing more of her story. She did it by telling me about a quilting piece that she was creating called um, Journey. And she told me that when she was younger, she was not very communicative. She was very shy, she wasn't very outgoing, but in the previous year, through Sarah Center and other community programs, she started to develop, develop her leadership. And I watched as she started growing and flourishing. She was one of our most active volunteers, serving on the member leadership council, going out to outreach, outreach events with me, and also instructing one of our classes. The next aspect of authentic storytelling is being able to develop an organizational story and tell it. 
Um, as Sarah Center has been in the constant stage of development this past year in St. Francis, Sarah Ministries has found its own foundation in the community. Um, I've worked with staff members to be able to develop an authentic story, to be able to show the impact of Sarah Center. So by being able to articulate our mission, who we serve, showing what we do is unique, and why it matters in the community, um, I've learned that it's very important for demonstrating the community why our work is necessary. Um, the next aspect of uh, storytelling is to make sure you choose your medium and develop and hone your tools. Every storyteller um, develops their craft and hones it. Um, this past year, a major part of my craft has been social media. Um, I don't consider myself any expert, but I've been able to work with, with coaching staff and coaching participants to be able to increase their center to reach in the community and also give participants a platform for continuing to develop their own businesses. Um, another aspect of storytelling is being to able to co-author. Um, admittedly, I was very weak in this area when I arrived at um, Sarah Center and in public allies in general. Um, I felt very confident in working independently, and I knew that I had a weakness in working with other people. Um, and I had a blessing to, to work both in Sarah Center and in my team service project to hone this skill further. What I've learned is a strengths-based perspective. I've learned to hone my own strength as a continuous learner and to be more vulnerable in group situations, to be able to listen to other people more, be able to be more open and honest and forthcoming with my ideas, um, and to be able to accept feedback. I've also learned that it's really important to, to harmonize my own particular style and abilities with the strengths of other people. And as I continue to open myself up to more opportunities, I find that I'm able to do that more effectively. And certainly, I'll continue to develop that skill as I leave public allies. I've also learned to focus on the existing resources and assets in the community. I've been able to work at the Sarah Center to develop a feasibility study with partners to explore the possibility of establishing a member-owned cooperative, and also to partner to be able to create tools that measure impact. And in my team service project, we were able to give voice and life to a vision of another community member to empower youth through spoken word. The last the empowerment class for women, um, I think that's one of the greatest things uh, that they've done here. Um, it's given me strength in all the other areas. So the last area of authentic storytelling is to be able to tell a story that talks about impact, that has that demonstrates a true impact and also has an impact on the listener or the people involved. Um, this past year, it's been very hard to quantify, um, but I've learned that experiences of change and personal transformation can be shared in a way that's meaningful with the community. Some tools that I've discovered to do that were interviews and photography, um, research projects, and uh, logic models, and also qualitative surveys. So I was able to reach out to professors at NKU and their social work department and to work to develop surveys that would demonstrate the demographics and population Sarah Center serves, as well as the impact and the personal effectiveness of my skills. Um, I also worked on a project using um, photo voice, which is a method of empowering participants to take photography on a particular topic to inform community members and stakeholders. We asked participants to look at what is success and self-sustainability mean to you. And the themes that we gathered are now informing the curriculum at Sarah Center. And as the study becomes published as well, it will go on to be an, um, an evidence-based model that the Sarah Center can use and share with other community organizations. So I feel that through developing these tools, I've made an impact on how Sarah Center is able to situate itself in the community be more effective, um, demonstrate the asset they, that they are to the community, and provide more accountability to them. Change. Change. Uh, and, and change in the positive and then change in the negative. Um, the neighborhood is changing. Um, and I'm conflicted about that too. Because often when the neighborhood is changing, a lot of people that look like me become displaced. So I've learned in being able to provide outlets for participants and community members to tell their story and for an organization to articulate its impact. This has led to providing more impact in the community. Um, while working in Over the Rhine at a time of you know, rapid development and change, um, I've really witnessed the real danger of a single story taking over. Um, and it's something that concerns me as somebody who wants to continue to work on change in the community and to work with others who are working towards the same goal. 
In an effort to remain authentic in my leadership, I recognize the responsibility to connect our stories as a community, and I recognize the importance of the relationship between storytelling and community change. Um, I've helped show that Sarah Center and its participants are very valuable assets and add um, a contribution that is very necessary to over the and the surrounding community. In conclusion, understanding the importance of an authentic story, learning to co-author with other people, and telling a story that has impact has contributed to my development as a, an emerging, emerging leader. As this journey continues to unfold, I will continue to honor this responsibility and capitalize on my personal strengths to be able to provide my team and my community with opportunities to utilize their strengths. Um, I will continue to look for ways to connect our stories and to co-create a common narrative. I believe this is important and my hope is that this will lead to collective change in the community. That place where our stories connect and that moment where we're able to listen and we're able to honor each other's stories and to learn from the other person, that's where real change will occur and that's where I hope to lead.